There's just something so special about a good weapon, you know? The way it has that orange glow surrounding it. Oh, oh wait, that's just the name. Ladies, gentlemen, and captains of all ages, as we all begin our journey through the gigantic game that is Starfield, there is something you will likely notice quite early on. The loot is pretty much all RNG-based. It's completely random. There are some legendary items that are in set locations, but even those randomly roll their actual effects, which means if you want to get powerful gear of any kind, you need to find a way to get as many legendaries as quickly as possible and just hope that RNG is kind on the rolls that you get. With that said, I'm sure there are plenty of you asking what is the best way to farm legendary equipment, and, well, there are multiple stages to it, really. But it all comes down to reloading saves as a base function. There are variations on this, I'll go over the two main ones, and also a couple of good locations that you can use these methods on early on within your journey if you want to get these types of items quickly. First, we should talk about the main reason that we do what we do for this. Even though there is a time-passing mechanic within Starfield, there is no point at which enemies respawn after you have killed them, which means that there is no way to farm one location over and over while keeping all of the items. That said, the trick here is to use saving the game and reloading it at specific points to give you bonus rolls on gear. There are specific enemies that I'm going to call elites, or legendary enemies as the game often calls them. They have a special badge next to their health bar that makes them look scarier, and they tend to be both higher level and have a much higher health pool than any other enemies in the area, and they are the ones with really good drop rates on higher quality equipment. In combat areas, just be constantly making quick saves then when you come across an elite, kill it, see what it drops. If you don't like it, you can reload your save and kill it again. You can do this for ages, pretty much forever if you really want to, and you can even move your save to just moments before finishing killing the enemy too. Here I've got this enemy downed, which is a really high quality enemy. I've got my difficulty set to very hard before I got the save, which increases the drop chances on the enemy as well. And then I'm just killing him. I'm finishing him while he's down from the save point over and over and over, seeing what I can get. I get a number of different legendaries and there's some that I wanted to keep, some that I didn't really want to, so I just had to pick one and decide which one I wanted to keep. This method is so simple, it can be done literally anywhere that has combat in the entire game. Nowhere is necessarily better than anywhere else, but there is a way to abuse this method even further and take it to more ridiculous levels, and one where locations actually do matter. That method involves abusing the way that the game's difficulty settings work. So at this point, basically the question is how much are you willing to abuse game mechanics that they made, that they included in the game, but clearly are not how they wanted you to play. But if you really want to push it, you can. If you'd like to. I'm not here to pass judgment on this concept one way or another, whether you should or shouldn't. I'm just showing you the best legendary farm options that we have in the game right now. That said, what we do here then is before you walk into an area that you expect to have combat, set your game difficulty to very hard. One of the effects of higher difficulty is that more enemies will spawn in as elites or legendary enemies as opposed to normal enemies, which makes them harder to kill, but gives them those high quality drop rates that we talked about before, the ones that you want to maximize. So you set your difficulty up to be really high before you load into the area. Enemies will spawn into the world when you load in on very hard difficulty, which will then make more of them be elite, so higher drop rates, save the game so you can reset, then change difficulty down to very easy. What this will do is simply make everything incredibly easy to kill while still having the really high drop rates because they already loaded in as the type of enemies they are. So you load into an area on very hard to spawn in high drop rate enemies, then change difficulty to very easy before you actually kill them so that it's really easy to do so. This is the simplest, strongest, most efficient, and effective way to farm legendaries in the game that we know about so far, and there are a couple of early locations to really effectively use this on if you want to. The big thing here too is while this definitely doesn't feel like an intended mechanic, and is instead an interesting interaction of their randomized loot system, their save game system, and their difficulty system as well, all three of these coming together in this way, I'm not even sure this could be easily patched out because of all the reasons that come together to actually make it work. So I don't even think I would expect this to be fixed by the developers at any point soon, so it's just a question of whether or not you want to do this in a single player game where it doesn't affect anyone else's experience, in which case it is just totally up to you. As for locations then, there are a couple that lead into each other quite early on. The first one is during an early main story mission called The Old Neighborhood. If you have already been playing so far, you may have passed this, but that's why we have a second location too. Anyways, during this mission there is a part where you have to dock with the Nova Galactic Star Yard on the moon once you do so, but before you get off of your ship, change your difficulty to very hard. Load into the Star Yard area itself, there's a little bit of distance that you have to cover before you actually encounter any enemies, so wait to save until you can see the fighting happening in front of you. You can see bullets and lasers passing by. At that point, do your save, change your difficulty back down to very easy, then just slaughter everything around you. You'll notice a lot of higher tier enemies than you would have had if it was on normal difficulty. This happens at like level 3 or 4, depending on how much you just stick to the main story, so it's really, really 
early on, and this can get you some really nice drops at this early point in the game. If you don't like the drops that you get, you can load your save again and just repeat this process until you get stuff that you like. Change your difficulty, run it again. It's really, really that simple. As for our second location, then there is a really solid one that you can get during that other farm location. Any space or enemies anywhere in the game have a relatively decent RNG chance of dropping an item called Secret Outpost. This gives you the coordinates for a special location on a level 30 planet, but I did all of this at level 5 myself on normal difficulty, so it's an extremely usable farm location anywhere up to level 30. And on top of that, by the time you leave, you will have a couple of bonus levels on you too because of the higher level enemies that you're fighting. Once you have the Secret Outpost data pad, you have to read it, which will give you the coordinates. If you try to grab jump directly there on your ship, you will likely be told that you need to explore the connecting regions first, you can't just jump the whole way. So we are simply going to follow the path that it shows, but one system at a time so that we can actually get there. This way we are still allowed to do it, it just takes a bit longer, it takes about five jumps instead of one, and then you'll make it to the right system. Once looking at it in planet view, simply look for the secret outpost landing location. There are some enemies immediately in front of you once you get off of your ship, simply push through them until you reach the door to the facility. This is the proper loading gate of the area, so set difficulty to very high before going in, then walk through the door, save your game once inside, change difficulty back down to very easy, and start blasting away and farming. There are tons of enemies in this place, so you get a lot of chances of good loot, and you can always reset it if you want to try again. What I will definitely say is be careful not to get too addicted to the slot machine nature of this all, just reloading save after save after save. If you get an item that you think you will genuinely use for a bit, just make a new save point so you keep that one with you, and then you can roll on different enemies. You can use this mechanic anywhere in the game, remember that, anywhere that has combat, so realistically you won't run out of chances to do so. So even when doing this, I'd recommend not overdoing it in one spot and getting yourself burnt out on the game and losing some pretty decent stuff just because you were searching for great stuff. All that said, this is it then everyone. To recap, loot is pretty much completely RNG based, but there are enemies in the game that have higher difficulty and higher drop rates designated by special badges next to their names. Combining this with the fact that loot is essentially rolled on enemy death, we can abuse saving and loading the game to let us kill these elite enemies over and over and over again until they drop something actually favorable, something that you actually want to use. Then you can move on and continue saving your game again. This can be taken even further thanks to the way the difficulty system works within the game, where very hard difficulty increases elite or legendary enemy spawn rates, and the enemy spawns are created when you load into an area. So if you load into an area on very hard, then swap difficulty to very easy, you get an experience with just giant loot pinatas all over the place basically in front of you, and you can reload the saves over and over until you get exactly what you want from them, which makes it even more ridiculous. And the best part is, this can be done anywhere that has combat in the entire game. Of course, as time goes on, we're probably going to find better and more effective locations for this, but this is definitely the strongest actual method, as I struggle to imagine anything being more effective than this. Look at the amount of rolls that I get per minute. I'm just constantly rolling this one enemy. I hope you've enjoyed this video then. I wish you luck if you decide to engage with any of these types of mechanics, if it's right for you, or if you just want to go for more of a purist route, I respect that as well. But the game is built in a way that is very abusable, so it entirely depends how willing you are to take advantage of that. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye